with that being said, um, anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Mandy Bateman. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Love Dub. I'm also a Pilates and yoga instructor. Used to be um, a technophobe, but I'm learning and expanding my knowledge um, on all things technical. Um, and uh, we'll go over a little bit how Love Dub can um, help you with your um, classes during this shelter in place time a little bit later in the webinar. Um, but I'm going to kick this over to Amira, who is the CEO and founder of Shrek Club and also um, a cycling instructor, correct? Yeah. And, yes, um, <laughs> and then also, I just found out she uh, is, uh, are you MBA as well from Harvard? She's an MBA from Harvard. Uh, so very, very knowledgeable in business and, um, and creating product and um, uh, yeah, so I'm super excited to have her um, partner with us on um, these, these types of programming. So for, uh, with that, uh, Amira, you can um, unmute yourself and, and get started. Mandy, that is too kind. Um, so again, I'm Amira. Some of you are members of Struck Club here, some of you are teammates, and some are members of Love Dub. Um, but uh, some of you know me as the founder and CEO at Struct Club, which is about bringing structure to instructors of these against and fitness. Uh, and through that, bringing structure to these fitness in general. And so today, um, I'm going to be sharing my screen um, as we're talking about as we're talking about music and live streaming and we've had to adapt a ton um, in current times. Please feel free to drop questions in the chat. Um, and what we're talking about during this session is we're talking about Zoom, um, typically talking about laptop-based uh, classes, and we're talking about live streaming, just to give you a sense of, of scope. And I'm, I'm gonna be walking through these slides. Um, goals that we're gonna be talking about today or putting together the complete experience where you've got check the workout, check your brand, check Chris sound, Chris music, and of course, sharing and starring you. And so in our agenda today, uh, we've been pretty productive already. We've gotten through the intros. We're going to go through a checklist setup for sound, workout, display, and brand. A little bit on monetization. We've gotten a lot of questions about that, as well as uh, music licensing and paths that you can take. It's a little bit more complicated when we take your classes from the live realm in person and into the virtual realm. And then we have some time for folks sent in some of those questions. Uh, Amira, can I interrupt you for a second? Um, can everyone please mute themselves? Um, I think Ms. Kelly, um, there's some kids in the background. It's hard for everyone to hear. Cool. Awesome. Let's go into those checklists of tools. You got your laptop. You got your Zoom. Hopefully got your Strut Club app, which is for your workout play. A reflector app. The demo reflector 3, there are a few options, will allow you to display your workout alongside your video. A branded image, this can be really simple, and we can do this via PowerPoint or Keynote, which is the next version of PowerPoint, to display your brand or even the class schedule coming up ahead. Loved up, we'll walk through that. You all to have signed up for this webinar have used it for scheduling. You can schedule, charge, get referrals, set up recurring appointments. It's amazing. And we're going to highly recommend investing in some way, shape, or form in a mic for those classes beyond using just the, the computer mics. This can range from you know something like $25 for a quick lapel mic if you just want to be testing stuff out. The sky is the limit. So here's a, a, a mic that I've posted here. We're, we're going to be sharing this presentation as well as this recording after for everybody. Um, but that's one where I have seen some really great results in um, some of these workouts. So let's start with sound setup. You are in Zoom. So step one, starting with Zoom open. Go ahead and, especially in rehearsal, um, hot tips, setting up 30, 45 minutes in advance. Start with video. Step two, you're going to hit the share button in the bottom middle of that video screen where you're going to find step three, different sound settings. Um, we have an option A here and an option B. We're going to re recommend option A, which is basic. There's a little tiny check button on the bottom left of that screen that's going to show up called share computer sound. 
so it's a little bit hidden, that's going to pick up the sound coming in from your computer. Option B, um, if you don't want to display the workout alongside your video, if you don't want to display your branding, you really just want to display your video and that's it, this is also an option to go into advanced options and just hit that box, computer sound only. Of course, we're gonna go through option A. Next, step four, pick your coaching mic. So make sure that, so there's a little next to that microphone icon on the bottom left of your Zoom screen, there's a little up arrow. It's gonna have a number of settings. We're gonna go into your audio settings, check that one, the mic volume is up at 100%. Uncheck that thing that there's a little box, automatically adjust volume. So what that does in Zoom is it's balancing the different inputs of sound. It's balancing your voice, it's balancing the music. Uncheck that. That's one of the things that causes like the garbly sound in some of these live streaming classes that you might have done already. And then um, highly recommended uh, from just the research that we're seeing as well as uh, tests that the laptop volume on your laptop is between 25 and 30 percent. That seems to be the sweet spot that we've uh, experienced so far. So those are some key Zoom settings that most people don't know about. It takes digging in a little bit, testing around a little bit that um, we wanted to share so that your sound coming in from your computer, whether it's the music, whether it's that mic sound, sounds really crisp and sounds balanced. Next, setting up the workout display alongside your video. This is not an endorsement or a, you know sponsoring, this is just the cheapest tool that I have found. If you found a better and cheaper one, like please feel free to drop it in the chat, but um, Reflector 3 allows you to display your phone screen on your laptop cable free. It's kind of like investing in a cable. So we listed just the prices for that on the right. Step one, open the software Reflector 3 on your computer. Step two, go into your iPhone um, and pull up the control center. Make sure that Bluetooth is on um, when step three, you select screen mirroring. You're gonna see some options of where to uh, mirror your screen. Mine, um, my laptop, so step four, select your laptop. Mine happens to be a MacBook Pro, yours might not be. Um, so just FYI. And then step five, there's going to be a code that comes up on screen. You're going to enter that code into the field that shows up for AirPlay. And once you do, step six, ta-da, it's going to open your screen right on your laptop. And so anything that you do on your screen on your phone is going to be reflected on your laptop screen. So then set up for brand display, you can move your um, workout that you're displaying on Strip Club to the left of your screen. You can create a brand image, move that over to the right side of your screen. I'll take you a little bit behind the scenes there. And then have, um, when you're screen sharing, your client is going to be able to see your video and they'll be able to expand your video and put that into the empty space. So you can have all three of these surfaces playing at the same time. So a little bit behind the scenes with how I put together this particular brand setup. It was really simple. Um, I use Keynote, which is basically PowerPoint for Mac. I got a free photo from unsplash.com. There's so many beautiful photos there with artists who are looking to get um, their name out there and photographers. So um, it's a great place to support those artists. And then hot tip, um, using this surface, you know, right here, I clearly have a jungle themed workout that we're going to be doing, but you can also post and promote your schedule to say, hey, next time um, we're going to have a class on Thursday at 5.30 p.m. or make sure to save the date on your calendar for these upcoming classes. So that's a, a really great way to promote um, upcoming events that you're going to be having. So here's what the complete picture looks like when you've got your workout on display, through your reflector uh, platform. You've got your brand on display, simply a slide that you've made. Um, and then three, you, when your client is viewing and they're in that video, they're gonna see that video of you. So just a quick note again, um, right here to in class, just make sure to remind your clients to expand the video to be as big as possible. Um, they might, yeah, they might not know how to do that. So um, using uh, the, it's called show large uh, active speaker video is the, the term for the particular button that they should pick. But 
the bigger picture button. And then, of course, don't forget to schedule and charge on LoveDub. And with that, I'm going to hand, hand it over to Mandy to walk us through a little bit of the basics there. Great. Thank you, Amira. Um, and um, don't forget, just drop any questions that you have within the, the chat um, section. And so I'm going to now share my screen and walk you through how to post a class on LubDub. Um, let's see. So um, you go to the LubDub website. Um, we do um, class scheduling, um, booking, promotion, and direct payout for any revenue for your classes. Um, during COVID-19, we're totally free for instructors to use. Um, so we don't take any transaction fees and there's no subscription fees as well. So um, to get started, go to lubdub, L-U-B-B-D-U-B-B dot I-O, and um, you can log in. After you've logged in, uh, you'll go to create event. And you're just going to simply fill out the form that you see here. So title and definitely some of the more exciting um, titles have been doing very well. So we have one class that's pandemic Pilates and that seems to be very popular. So be playful, be fun with your titles. Um, this virtual event um, uh, button will already be checked for you. Um, we do do live classes once we go back to normal um, workshops, retreats and that kind of thing. So um, keep us in mind for that in the future. Um, after that, you'll just enter your Zoom, or you could use Google Meet or some other um, video conferencing tool. So you'll just put that within the URL section up here. Um, that is a required field, so you definitely have to put some kind of video conferencing link in there. Um, if you have a password, you can place the password in this section down here. Your name will already be populated um, as the teacher. You can select an image and um, any of the supported files um, uh, will be up here. No um, PDFs, um, but image files only. Then you can come down here and write a, a description for your class. Um, so my suggestion is to really embellish and write a lot um, on why a person would want to come, um, what kind, type of equipment they have, um, and what they should expect from your session. Um, and we're all fitness and wellness, so anything goes really. Um, we have a bunch of different styles um, and these tags are how your students will search for your class. I'll show you how, what the search page, page looks like. So there's a lot of different options in here and we're always adding options as well. So um, you can choose up to four of these options um, beginner, let's say beginner, vinyasa yoga, um, and I could add two more if I wanted, but I'll just keep it with that. Uh, then it, this is the date and time of your event. So um, this would be the start date. My suggestion is to do recurring events. So uh, you could do multiple days a week. And um, right now we're currently expanding every, everybody's offerings. They, everybody kind of went till the end of April um, for their recurring events. And now we're having to um, push those out. So my suggestion would be to go out quite a few months because who knows how long this is gonna happen. And um, then uh, you can always cancel if for some reason you want to um, uh, cancel your virtual um, live stream off, um, options or excuse me, classes. We do allow late, um, late signups. Um, I call that island time. Uh, a lot of people haven't been able to get uh, any kind of um, window before class. So there, you know, we, we added this option to allow late signups. Um, you can do free events, but I highly recommend that you get paid for the amazing um, services that you provide your clients. Um, here is capacity. For the Zoom Pro uh, subscription, if you're using Zoom, you can have up to 100 capacity. My suggestion, though, is to put 95 or something like that in there because you may want to give away 
a free spot to your mom or your sister or your love, you know, your, your partner. Um, and then for ticket price, the average ticket price for um, a one hour class is $9 on our platform. But just to let you know, I teach a class and I charge 20. So this um, ticket price is up to you. Uh, I don't really like discounting my classes, so I'm sticking with my regular um, class price. And then the reward amount, that's what makes LubDub, um, I think, really special. Uh, when, the, when you do this, you can put in any reward amount. Um, so I suggest 10 to 20% of the ticket price. And this is um, incentivizes your students to share um, your class with their friends and family. Um, and every time they share your class with somebody uh, and help you promote it, they would get this reward amount. They can make as much money um, as possible, share it as many times as they want, and that's going to go into their digital wallet they, that they can use towards future classes. And then you click the preview button. You'll get a screen just to make sure that everything, all the information is correct. And then you can click save, and then your class will go live um, in our marketplace. Uh, so this is an example of, of some of the classes that we have um, within the platform, all super, super fun. So um, this class, this core class, uh, you can see here's the description down here, the event time. Um, the additional classes that she teaches are down here. She just has this one class, but if she had more, there would be more classes here. The instructor has a profile page. I'll skip that for, for now. You can kind of just play around in our, our platform and check those out. Um, and when students share your class, they would just click that button. They could get a link that has a tracking cookie, cookie in it that says that you're the one who shared it or your student is sharing it so we know who's doing the sharing. And then when you book your class, uh, or excuse me, when your students book the class, they would just click on that button and um, they would um, do all the payment in here, and they're also prompted to purchase any other classes that are in that series as well. That's just a, a new feature that we just launched. Um, so the, I will stop from here. We can go through questions. If you have any more questions on LoveDub, I want to make sure that we can get through all of the music and live streaming um, part or content of the program. Brilliant. I love it. And by the way, all of you to book this class, you used LoveDub, so you're already familiar with it and how easy it is to, to book a class. Um, thanks, Mandy. Perfect. Uh, a note. So this is to one of the questions that Lindsay asked in um, the chat, which if you're playing music with your workout, make sure that the music is playing through your computer. So this is, uh, you have to just, just check those audio settings um, and make sure it's coming from your computer because the demo that we talked about in Zoom is about picking up the sound coming from your computer. So that's a quick note there instead of the music playing out of your phone. Okay, so music licensing. For video streaming, it's not the same as playing music in your facility where your facility is covering the rights. So one does not simply play any old playlist from Spotify, buy MP3s uh, of the hottest tracks just because, or like rip the CD tracks that you've got or use those even though you own them or even get an ASCAP or a BMI license. Video streaming, just fundamentally, it's a different product, it's a different game. There are a couple of things that you need to be playing those popular or normal playlists in your videos. Um, you need to obtain, or, aka purchase, uh, the following things from publishers of the songs, the people who own the rights to those songs and playing them and playing them in videos. One, the master license. Two, the synchronization, or also known as a sync license. This, just, just so you know, can cost hundreds to thousands of dollars per you know, what people call normal or popular song. And some of the factors that play into the cost include the popularity of the song, of the artist, who it is that's publishing it, how that video is used, if it's free versus a paid video class, if it's one time live versus posted to YouTube or Facebook afterward, as well as even how you or anybody who is negotiating on behalf of you negotiates that. Um, so, can't just simply play out Spotify within your video as you're recording your as you're recording your workout. It's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, you can technically do it 
but you, you've got to do it the right way. So there are a few options that we are going to just walk through. One, if you want to keep those normal Spotify playlists what you or Apple Music play, playlists, what you would be using in those live classes, you can do that, but you have to have voice only in the video and distribute those playlists separately to people at home. One, you can do that with Strut Club. So you can share or sell your Strut Club workouts directly to your clients. Um, if you would like to monetize those, we have uh, a new feature uh, and a new dimension of our platform within the app that we launched last week called the Struct Shop. And um, we also have web pages where we can post the classes that you have made in Struct Club. Uh, two, announcing, um, really excited to announce here that next week we're going to be offering uh, a share feature within the Struct Club app. So um, again, Mandy and I recommend that you charge for your services, but if you want to share um, workouts directly to clients that play alongside the music, you can do that in Struck Club starting next week. B, you can also share those playlists directly with the clients so they can play the music alongside your video from their phone or another device and get the workout. Option two, you want music in your video. You, can, you don't have the money to pay, you know, ranging we're hearing sometimes at low as 750 to thousands of dollars for each of those songs. Cheaper music for your video. There is stuff out there, royalty-free music, music that's made for fitness professionals, cover tracks is maybe 10% of the cost of normal popular music, various subscription services uh, that are out there. Um, we can talk through some of those. If you really want music within that video and you're not, you know, preferential to it's, you know, it has to be like normal popular music, the normal playlist that I would make in Spotify or Apple Music. And then option three, hey, there is always the option to invest in those master licenses and um, the synchronization licenses for the songs that you want. Um, for most people, just because of affordability, that's not really an option. But if you can't afford it, like, that's great. <laughs> so, you know, looping back to the option one that is, you know, available through using Struck Club or your normal playlists. Um, at the moment, Struck Club is the only way on the market to get paid for workout plans that do run alongside those normal playlists without having to deal with licensing. How do we do this? It's because our software does integrate directly with Spotify and Apple Music, which requires your clients your, um, at the end of the day who are playing your workouts to have subscriptions in order to play that music. In other words, when your clients play music and workouts through Struck Club, the streaming fees are already covered. Um, so now we get a couple minutes to move into Q&A, just a few minutes. Um, a few of you submitted questions in advance. So we'll start with those and then we'll go through the chat. Um, one, how do I know whether to invest that, even just the time, not even the money, but the time in streaming when it's unclear when and how um, post at home shelter is going to look like. Um, so just to give a forecast, MindBody shared this a couple of days ago. They did a consumer survey within their um, audience of if shelter at home quarantine were to end today, which of the following would best describe your next steps? And basically the message here is 82% uh, anticipate that virtual is here to stay and that they foresee themselves using virtual options in hybrid with going back to the studios. So 83 83 to 85% of them in, in MindBody's report showed that they absolutely want to go back to your classes in the studios, but also do anticipate kind of a hybrid and virtual component running alongside that. So in sum, we think it's worth trying if you're thinking about it. Another question, I'd love to know the ideal tech setup on Zoom for a cycling class. So ideally music with minimal delay, my voice loud and clear, and three, be able to see my students writing. So music with minimal delay, a lot of that is actually going to depend on your uh, internet and whether you have uh, downloaded tracks to the device that you're playing the music from. So um, in addition to the rec recommendations that we had earlier on within the demo, just make sure that um, the tracks are on your device, whichever device you're playing on, uh, ideally downloaded, and that you're in a place of clear internet. Uh, and then, uh, voice loud and clear, 
I think that um, investing in that mic, kind of like we mentioned earlier, and we can go through if there are other people on this chat who have had mic options that they've really loved beyond um, the ones that we've recommended, feel free to drop them in the chat or we can um, chat more about them. We just want to make sure that you all have the best mics. I think the computer mic is not going to be the best for making sure that your voice is loud and clear. And then be able to see your students writing. Um, as you're sharing your screen and as you're presenting on Zoom, there's a thumbnail uh, view uh, to be able to view as many of your clients as possible. Um, and if you are Zooming without the screen share, uh, Zoom has a setting called gallery view. So I'll just drop that in here as we share the presentation after um, after this uh, this chat. And then those were the Q&As. We're at the end of the slide presentation, but if there were other questions that had come through on the chat, Mandy, that you had caught in the meantime, let's, let's go through those. Yeah, so this one comes in from Nora, um, and she is asking um, for intel on what, what kind of music is best to share via Zoom. Uh, she teaches yoga and um, likes to share music during the class, but it seems like some music just transmits better than others. Uh, and I think that what she's doing is has, she has a speaker in the room with her. Okay, so on transit, yeah, transmission, I would um, yeah, rewind this video back to the portion around uh, the sound settings for Zoom as so that one, the music is and the sound is picked up through the computer. And two, frankly, even before that, that the music is playing as opposed to a speaker from your computer. So if this is a you know a question about transmission, then you can, you know, and and picking up from an external speaker through your computer mic and looping that through uh, into your Zoom, it's gonna be best to uh, have the sound playing from your computer as well as um, having the Zoom settings that pick up the sound from the computer. So it's not looping through speakers and mics of different kinds. It's, it's coming from one source. Awesome. And then um, let's see, this is from Lindsay. Uh, she'd love more um, on the best audio setup for optimizing the mic and music. Um, and you might have already answered her question. Um, she is curious about using the computer for video, music, and mics. Yeah, I think um, that's, and even still if the, if the questions are, um, we, we covered a lot of ground. And so for that, I would highlight um, this sound setup piece where you would be selecting where a Zoom is sharing your sound from. So if you share your computer sound and A, you've got the music playing through the computer and B, you're hooked up with a mic, then go into um, the step four here where you're making sure the Zoom is also picking up sound from your computer mic, that that mic volume is all the way up, and that that and, and on the sound balance, um, having that laptop volume, we're seeing that 25 to 30% is the sweet spot. So uh, for that question, I would re-highlight back to uh, slides five through seven. Excellent. Um, uh, Shay? Uh, was wondering if these are the same settings that work on an iPad. So for, is that uh, settings, Zoom settings or Strut Club settings or um, just to clarify, if it's, if it's Zoom settings, the, the, the settings that we're pointing out here, um, if you're streaming from, just apply when you're streaming from your laptop or you're streaming from your computer. So we have not tested these on Zoom settings for iPad. Okay. However, if, if we're asking about Struck Club, does Struck Club work on iPad? Yeah, Struck Club is also compatible with, with iPad. If you're taking a uh, workout and reflecting on, I'm just going to do a little quick. Um, you can also, uh, instead of this looking like an iPhone, if you're using your reflector tool, it'll widen up and it'll look like an iPad. I hope I answered the question, the fundamental question there. Um, yeah, and just feel free, Shay, if you need to drop more, um, if you want more information about that, just drop it into the chat. Um, and uh, let's see, someone asked about um, the share credit, the Love Dub share credit. Um, if they share, do they only get the credit if their friend signs up? 
Um, I'm not sure if you mean like it ha that like it really has to be a friend. So basically, if you want to share a class on social media, um, and anyone can sign up. So you could actually um, you know, go out there and promote, promote, promote classes that you feel are compelling for you um, and make, you know, make money. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a friend, but yes, somebody does have to sign up through your link to get that referral credit. Um, and we still have a bunch more, Amira, is that okay if we keep yeah. going? Yeah, for people who want to, we'll, we'll stay on. I can stay on a couple minutes. Um, but do, 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 um, Lindsay's wondering if we could get a demo of what a class looks like in um, Struck Club. I'm curious how the music integration works for the client. Sure, let me, uh, let me set that up for a second. Let me make sure my reflector is on. We've got the screen mirroring. If I could demo my phone and my computer and and Zoom at the same time in real time, uh, that would be it. Would be like Inception, Zoomception. Here we go. His so, nails. Here. Thank you. So this is what video on display too. But this is um, what my screen looks like when I am sharing my reflector app. You can see me dynamically. I'm doing some stuff on my phone. We'll be able to see that on on the left. Um, and you might also, you know, want to position your phone on the right. Here, check this out. I'm going to be like dragging this down. So uh, you can position this as, as you wish. And then here's that brand image that I had made in Keynote. I've, I've pushed it over to the right. So. Great. Yeah, and and then the, uh, the, your video is going to be right underneath your name. Yeah, so you might be able to see my Zoom video, um, but I'm just going to, yeah, it might, can you, can you guys see my Zoom video as it's, um, Zoom may not share back the video of Zoom that I'm showing you, but basically I'm going to announce to outline where I have positioned my Zoom video. Hey. <laughs> my video shows Alicia right now. So that's what the complete picture looks like. It's just like the screenshot that um, was in the slide. And in reality, your, you know, your client can put the video over here. They can put your video over here. They could put it over here. Um, so you might, we would recommend instructing your client to, you know, position it in an empty space where it's not blocking anything else. Great. And next question. Um, so I'm going to combine two questions. Julia um, is curious about a lapel mic um, and how to adjust the audio settings to accommodate a mic. And then also um, Lindsay is wondering about using Apple um, Air, uh, Air Pods um, for, for the mic. Have you tried that before? That's really interesting. I don't yeah, I might not recommend AirPods um, as the like best mic. I haven't actually, I mean, I haven't seen great videos coming from that, but if you experience otherwise, like absolutely please flag us down. Um, I, I would say it's, I don't know, it, it might be worth trying. Um, so yeah, but I, yeah, that might not be the first, the first source that I, I would go to. In terms of lapel mic and balancing, when you hook that up and it, presuming that the lapel mic, the one that, that we recommend has like a USB where you can plug it into your computer. I'm sure some have Bluetooth. Um, going back to those slides uh, five through seven about adjusting where to find um, where within Zoom you can identify the mic that it's picking up sound from uh, will be the best way to do it. And that's going to be that little mute button at the bottom left. There's an up arrow, um, audio settings. So um, specifically that will be uh, going back to slide seven. 
Great. And so this is coming from a musician, from Julia. Um, she's wondering if you can adjust the audio settings, um, like reverb and such. Is that, Julia, a question for Zoom or, or Strut Club? Which? Yeah, probably for both. Like I've been at part of yoga classes where they're singing kirtan with reverb and it sounds really beautiful. And I'm wondering if you can do that straight through Zoom or through Strut Club. Yeah, I haven't seen any revert if it's like, I want to make my, uh, I want to make my mic sound like a concert hall. Um, <laughs> I don't think, yeah, Zoom is quite that sophisticated yet. I can, I actually, that's really great you clarified because I would have thought you had meant like, hey, the sound is echoing and reverbing in my room and how do I avoid that? And the best way we might recommend for that type of question is like making sure that you have that mic making sure that the sound is coming, you know, again, feeding through your computer and that Zoom is picking, picking the sound up through your computer. But in terms of adding reverb, I think um, that would actually, hmm, that's really interesting. In a live class, I, I don't know and I haven't seen that. In a pre-recorded class, um, I could see people using like Pro Tools or sound software to add reverb, um, you know, as a musician myself too, I've like played concert oboe and stuff, um, flute as well, and adding reverb into your recordings is something that you do in, uh, that I've been exposed to doing in editing as opposed to in real time. Yeah, yeah, I think it would be a Pro, pro Tools um, uh, situation. Uh, all right, let's see. And Kristen, um, can you sort in the app to see what classes require Spotify premium for playlists? So in Struck Club in general, um, if you're using if you're using Spotify as your source of music, uh, Spotify, when it integrates with any app, including ours, is going to re require a premium version in order to play music. So it's going to kick you over to Spotify premium. Um, if for some reason you want to use Spotify without playing the music, like you just want to import data for your playlists and, and map out your workouts, it, that wouldn't require Spotify premium. But most people do use Spotify, you know, their a core functionality is playing music and playing audio. So Spotify is going to require a Spotify premium there. Same with Apple Music, it's going to require an Apple Music subscription if that is your um, music player of choice. All right, and this is from Eliza. Uh, um, if you're if you're just streaming but not recording, do you still need to have the two license options, or just when your recording comes into play? When you're you streaming too, yeah. So just to clarify there, and you know your licensing costs will look different if your intention is just to live stream it, just to um, have it be a one time class you're not posting it to Facebook, you're not posting it to YouTube, the license is still required if you want the music within your video. Um, it just would not, when you're going through negotiations, it would not cost as much. I have heard of people being able to negotiate, like, look, I have charged for this class, um, and maybe you know we could do a, a, a revenue share model. Typically, that person is they have like an incredible amount of following and they can make an incredible amount of revenue off of that class. So it's more favorable for the publisher than um, just paying for the license. But, you know, there's the question of what should you do and there's a question of what you can do. Of course, um, you can, you know, kind of go about and do what you want. You probably at this time, you know, you might not get caught or have to face ramifications, but there is the thing that, you know, that should be done and doing it the right way. The right way even with live streaming is um, to make sure that you have that master license and to make sure that you have uh, the synchronization license that allows you to have the, the music with the video that is the right way to do it um, that's for normal you know kind of these like normal popular playlists obviously there's other music that you can get access to I've heard yes music being a source of, of music that um, instructors and coaches are using with their live streams um, in some cases, I, you know, for, for me personally, I have friends who are independent artists that I like to support and, and give exposure, uh, and they own their music. And so I have times myself work directly with artists who own their music to feature their music and then give them a shout out um, and direct students to their, 
to their music so that they can get found. So there are ways to do that with an independent artist too. It's just something that takes more of investment of time as opposed to an investment of money. I love that. I think it's so important um, that we are supported as fitness and wellness instructors. And then also we um, repay the favor and possibly partner with other musicians who need support as well. So thank you for saying that. Um, Lindsay just um, asked if, oh, I just lost it. Um, sorry, Lindsay, I just lost your thing. Do, 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 do. Let me, let me go. Oh, so um, is the purpose of the reflector app just so you can use uh, strut club on your laptop? It's just to reflect anything you might be using on your phone. You can use Strut Club. You can use another source of workout. One thing that we have seen, just for context, people do, as I've been attending classes, um, is people writing workouts on whiteboards. And, you know, for the life of me, I can't, I can't see those even when they're big and bold. So this is just for helping your students out, helping your clients um, be able to forecast and see what's going on in the workout. You can display Strut Club. You can display, you know, anything else on your phone. It's just a hot tip for that. Um, and we had a couple of uh, other people who sent in tips. Um, Javier, um, he said that you can use um, AirPods with Zoom. Also, if you're using Mac computers, you won't be able to connect a lapel mic directly to your computer. So what are you saying? That it has to be Bluetooth? Is that what you're saying? You have to unmute yourself. So unfortunately, my computers do not have a line in uh, for mics. Uh, so you would actually have to um, do it through a board, through a mixing board, or you would have to use a USB mic. There is a workaround though that includes using a splitter. So um, Mac computers only have a, like a, your headphone jack, which doubles as a um, uh, mic input. But if you try to use a uh, if you try to use a lapel mic and you plug it into your computer, it's, it's not going to work and it's going to drive you crazy. So, um, but if you uh, if you can find an um, an Amazon a splitter that has in one end you have the uh, uh, 3.5 millimeter jack and then you have two inputs. One is marked for headphones and the other one is marked for mic. When you plug that into your computer, then uh, it basically fools your computer and it allows you to use a, you know, lapel mic or something like that. But if you try to um, use it directly, it's not going to work. Yeah, that's the fun thing about Max too. That's a really phenomenal tip. The different Macs, different versions are also going to have, like, if you look at the sides, like, different ways to, like, input stuff. They, you know, you'll have, if you have a really old Mac, it might have, uh, you know, your optical drive and new Macs won't have that optical drive and so on and so forth. So making sure that whichever computer, like, whichever version that you have, that you are checking that, like, input and the output, that things will will actually plug in to what it is that you're getting. And if they don't, making sure to get the various adapters that will allow what it is that you're buying to, to plug into whatever computer that you're using. Yeah. I would still like to get a double check for that. That'll be important because there's so many versions of devices now. The funny thing is that pretty much any Bluetooth uh, headphone and uh, headphone that is going to allow you to take phone calls, for example, that has a mic, is going to work with Zoom. Like I taught a class uh, this past uh, Saturday with these cams. So I could hear the music and I could talk to, you know, to my attendees on, uh, at the same time. Not the best, uh, not the best option, but it, it works. And, you know, I'm um, same thing um, applies to um, AirPods. So yeah, check it out, test it out, see how it works for you and uh, go for it. And, and so it looks like, are you wearing a gaming headset? Is that what you have on right now? It's not a gaming headset. A gaming headset would have a, uh, a, a mic head. Uh, definitely that will make things a lot uh, more clear when you are, um, or when you're, for example, you're teaching in Zoom because your, uh, your voice will be captured a lot better than with these guys. Uh, the, the cool thing about it, you know, is that when you use something like this, you can hear your music through your headphones mm -hmm. at the same time 
that you are that you're teaching. The caveat is that your quality of music, like let's say that I'm playing music from Spotify, um, what I'm getting is a really bad quality, but it allows me to, to um, follow the class, whereas my attendees is gonna, are going to uh, get great quality in terms of music, so yeah. Great, and then Lee kind of is um, also saying that the earbuds work well if they stay in. Um, if you touch them, um, it can alter the music and may pause the mic. Um, she said for yoga, they don't really work, but the sound is crisp. So um, uh, yeah, and um, I think that that's what we have for questions. Um, does anybody have a, a burning desire? comment, question? No? Great, oh, did we, um, and we talked about, yeah, we talked about um, moving forward with our virtual classes and hopefully, um, this is the new normal, you guys. Hopefully you're liking it, I'm loving it. I'm always late for everything. I'm never late now for my classes. <laughs> and I'm getting paid better. <laughs> Good. Well, thanks everybody for jumping on. Again, we're going to um, reshare the recording as well as the slides after the fact, so you'll have access to all of those. Um, keep in touch. Feel free to send feedback for, you know, upcoming webinars, and we'll have a great weekend. Great. Thank you, guys. I'm going to jump my email.